What is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to you on a quick video. I wanted to let you guys know I got some new merchandise available, not just t-shirt anymore. I got different type of t-shirts, different type of shirts and logos that you can purchase on my spread shirt and also hoodies now. We have expanded and added more to the channel and more merchandise for the brand. Thanks for supporting. It will be in the description and the links will be in the comment section below. Thanks for helping me and supporting the movement. Quinn Way Basketball Now says I'm going to check out the video. What is good, YouTube? Coming to y'all on this Wednesday. Getting ready to do this video for you guys. The last four teams, Phoenix, Brooklyn, Charlotte, and Orlando. And we're going to talk about the Brooklyn Nets. And this is a team that was the laughing stock of the NBA. Everybody was talking trash about them. Everybody was down in them. Everybody was saying how stupid they was. They gave away a lot of young assets. They was dumb for it. Now, transition, move forward a couple years later. They have their draft pick this year. Um, they have some young talent. They have a lot of aspiring contract. They have the ability to have two max spaces um, available in free agency for the next couple years, which means they can sign two superstars and potentially a third, depending on what they do these next couple years and who they sign these next couple years. And they have the interest of Jimmy Butler. This is a team that was able to get one of the top 10 players at that time in Darren Williams. And then it was able to get Joe Johnson, Kevin Garnett, in Paul Pierce while also still retaining Brooke Lopez, who they drafted. So they was able to get stars to come to Brooklyn and New Jersey. And remember, Darren Williams signed the extension. He got traded to go to Brooklyn, and he signed the extension. So he wanted to stay after he got traded when a lot of people didn't think he was going to stay, kind of like Paul George, but he also did stay um, after he was traded. And people forget about that um, because Darren Williams ain't the player he used to be, and he's not even in the NBA no more. But he did that before Paul George did it um, this last two years ago. And with that being said, they showed that ability. And I said this in the uh, videos um, throughout this year that the Brooklyn are going in the right direction with the cat space and now having a lot of picks uh, first and second round, plus they get their own pick. And if they be bad, which we all expected them not to make the playoffs, they're going to at least get a top five to top 10 pick um, plus the other picks that they accumulated. So they're going in the right direction. They have the flexibility to win now by trading and signing free agents. And they also have the ability to draft a superstar as long as they stay bad and terrible. Now, I'm not going to really talk too much about this roster because this roster doesn't really matter because not too many players on this roster is a part of the big picture of being a contender in the next couple years. A lot of these players are just on this roster because they had to fill roster spots. Plus, they wanted to be decent while also getting contracts that was going to come off their books and give them salary cap and actually got traded to them so that way they can get um, the max contract spot plus picks. So they were just taking in people contracts to get picks. And they was taking in people contracts because it was going to aspire. Um, and that would give them the flexibility to have two max contract spots. So guys like Shabazz Mapier, um, Darrell Arthur, Damari Carroll, Alan Crabb, they're not really a part of the big picture and what they're trying to do in Brooklyn. They was just there for the picks and there for the salary cap relief in years when they were aspired. So even Kenneth Fareed, I'm not going to talk too much about. He is a guy that I'm going to focus on right now, though. He was a guy that a lot of people gave up on. A lot of people thought he was washed up. He was outdated. He hasn't evolved. He's not a great player anymore. They even thought that he was one of the most untradeable players in the, in the whole NBA. He finally gets traded to Brooklyn. He's 28 years old. He still can play. And he's still getting paid $13 million a year, which ain't that bad. But considering that he doesn't really do much besides rebound and dunk, and he can't really shoot or space out the floor, that is a problem. But at the same time, they only traded for him to get his contract off the books and get a pick and some young assets. Um, so he just planned to resurrect his career, get some minutes. And if he does play well, he can be a trade target, um, even a buyout target. Um, and also, you know, if he does play well and show some improvements, that's a guy that you can possibly get, you know, a pick from if he does pan out and the team wants to try him out for the end of the, the middle to the end of the season in the trade deadline. You also have um, D'Angelo Russell, one of the players that a lot of people have been talking about. He's only 22 years old. I think a lot of people forget 
that D'Angelo Russell is not like he's a 25, 26-year-old. Um, he's a 22-year-old, and he's a guy with a lot of potential. He's a guy that has a big name in the NBA for a guy that hasn't really done much because a lot of people know who D'Angelo Russell is. A lot of people have respect for him, and they feel like he can play. Um, and he has been able to show that, especially in the beginning of the season. He was making an argument for potentially being um, the most improved player in the NBA. In October, he averaged 21 points a game and five assists and four rebounds on 46% shooting and 40, 34% from three. Also, he had a great November, averaging 19.8 points a game, 46 from the field. He shot bad from three, and he shot 54% from the free throw line, but he still gave you um, five rebounds and six assists while he was still filling out his teammates and filling out his game. Obviously, he ended up getting injured like the last couple years, and his numbers started to drop off. But he did get to a good start with this team, and he did show that he can potentially be a scorer, um, whether that's coming off the bench or even starting in the NBA will he be the best player on your team I think we're all out of that um, hype but he can be a guy that you can rely on to score and make plays whether it's coming off the bench or even becoming this third or the fourth best player on the team he can give you decent spot of three-point shooting he's not afraid of the big moments he's not scared to take big shots and he's not scared of any player even though he might not be the best player he's not scared to go at any point guard he was in the west when he was with the lakers and he built up that confidence going against those type of players every game because he did start when he was in la and definitely coming into this season he has a lot to prove because his deal he can get a rookie at max he can get a extension or he can be a free agent fighting to stay in the nba i think this is a year that he really has to take serious if he really wants that long-term commitment from a team he still has the potential I think he will get off to a good start again um Spencer Dimwitty took up a lot of his minutes once he got injured and he ended up getting those spots um uh, which hurted his numbers at the end of the season and he got the knee injury again I believe and that hurted him too because he had to rehab and then he had to play right back into shape he had to come off the minutes restriction and that hurted his numbers but like I said he did get off to a decent start um this last season and we'll see what he does this year as he's coming into a contract extension year um jared dudley solid role player he, he's fine spencer dimwitty he's 25 years old but he shows a lot of potential of being the starting point guard for this team he can play the one or the two um he's a solid decent player i don't think he's going to be their franchise point guard he's not that good but he's good enough to take that position until they can get a all-star caliber player um for that point guard position or that shooting guard position like i said i don't know if d'angelo russell will be that guy i don't know if it will be spencer dinwiddie until they can find somebody better but until now they're both solid players at that position whether it's the two or the three or both playing together at the end of the day they're respectable ed davis is a guy that's older he used to be a young prospect that everybody was trying out now he's just a veteran trying to stay on the roster for his career alan crab got overpaid and he been overlooked because of his contract people worry about more about what he made than what he actually is doing um he's still a solid player and He's going to be a guy I mostly remember because his contract. Damari Carroll was the missing piece for Toronto. They signed him up soon as free agency started, and he's no longer on that roster, and they already replaced him already. And now he's basically playing in um, Brooklyn, trying to resurrect his career, trying to get back to where he was before the contract that he got from Toronto. He had a decent season. Um from the three-point line, 40, I mean, 37%, shooting five threes a game. Um, he still showed that he can get rebounds at his position. He showed that he's still a solid playmaker, whether he's on or off the ball. Mostly off the ball, he makes the right passes. He trusts his teammates. He knocks down the shots. He's supposed to. He takes the shots he knows he can make. And he actually start becoming a better ball handler. Only problem with Damari Carroll is he's not the defender that he was before. He's not the player that he was before. And once you have severe injuries and you can't get back to where he was before, he's not going to get paid as much as he used to. He was not, he's not going to have the same respect around the league. And he's not the same player that he was before. And you, usually when you get injured, you never are. And he's 32 years old. Let me put that on top of that. So he's going to the point where he's going to either be a good role player on the bench as a seventh or eighth guy, or he's just going to be a starter on a bad team. So we're going to see what happens with Damari Carroll's career um, going forward. 
Quincy AC is a solid player. Jared Allen is the future for this team. A guy that can play the four or the five athletic mobile um, has huge potential and he's only 20 years old. Um, this is one of their cornerstones for right now. He can be a piece that they can trade for because people will be interested like, like in a Jimmy Butler trade or a trade to get the other max guy if they sign somebody this free agency. I can see him be a part of those trades because he is an intriguing piece. He is mobile. He is fast. He is athletic. He can be a solid defender. He can be a decent offensive player if he continue to put the work in. And I can see him being a trade chip for them to get some pieces or even a potential superstar or all-star caliber player because he does have interest from a lot of players and he is building that respect. Same thing with Karis LeVert. He's a guy that had one of his better seasons last year. Um, he is 6'7", so he can play the two or the three, um, depending on who he's guarding, depending on what he's doing. He didn't have a the best season ever, but he shot 43% from the field, 34 from three. He still was able to get 3.7 rebounds. He played, he had, was a playmaker because of injuries, and he showed that he can be a decent passer on and off the ball, and he averaged 12 points a game. He still is only 24, and he won't turn 25 into next year, and he only been in the NBA two years. This will be his third season, and he still has to continue to improve, and it looks like he looks like a solid player, and he's playing at home. So we'll definitely see um, what he's going to do, and if he can continue to improve, I can definitely see him and Jared Allen being a part of a trade package that can really land them an all-star free agent or at least some interest um, because they are good and you got a factor they still have dim witty they still do have guys like d'angelo russell and they do have damari carroll and alan crab that can be the filler because these guys is on their rookie contract they can fill in the rest of the cap space to make the deals work if they go after a jimmy butler or after a player that's even worth more than jimmy butler they have the contracts like those that they can add the young pieces plus the picks that they accumulated with the ability to fill the rest of that cap space with a crab with a damari carroll to reach the limit to get that player to come plus they can take more back anyway because they have the cap space so even if they don't have enough cap i mean enough of a player to match that cap they can always take some cap back because they have a lot of cap space now so even if they got to trade some young players or even add some contracts they got enough cap so where they can absorb the contract of the all-star without giving up too much talent or even some aspiring deals so they'll still have that other max contract spot um to get that other max contract player whether it's through trade or free agency so all they can really do is go out there and play and do their best and if they win 30 30 to 35 games i wouldn't be surprised but if they won less than that i wouldn't be surprised either i don't have this team making the playoffs i think their big picture is trying to get that that max contract player whether it's through trade or free agency and i think that's their main goal this season and that's their main goal in the off season that's their goal in the trade deadline is to try to get that franchise cornerstone that they can build apart i mean build up build with or even become that guy whether jimmy butler can you really win a championship with jimmy butler as your best player the only thing about that is you have to get them to find out and also you have to you know have a plan when you do get them to try to build upon that to get back into championship contention in the Eastern Conference. And they're not there yet, but they put themselves in a good position to get that star. And I got to like what they're doing five years later. They look smart. They look like geniuses. Five years ago, they looked like crazy people that was doing some stupid bullshit. And now they out of that phase. And now we got to look at what they are now and don't judge them off the past and just continue to move on in the future and in the present of what they can do now. And they good putting themselves in a good position. Let me know what you guys think. Check out my website, analysisplayground.com. Link in the description, comment section below. Check out my Facebook page, analysisplayground.com. Link in the description, comment section below. Like on Facebook to show support. Also, check out my spread shirt. You can find t-shirts, hoodies, sweaters, and other accessories on my spread shirt. Thanks for buying. Thanks for supporting. Also, if you want any type of color, any type of brand, that's a, I mean, any type of color, any type of shirt, any type of hoodie, you can pick your color. You can pick the logo, and you can purchase it on my spread shirt. And continue to binge watch and keep up with my videos. Thanks for the support. Thanks for watching. Thanks for continuing watching. And thanks for the people that's watching my older videos. And check them out if you're new to the channel. 
Quinn Wade basketball now since I'm gone. Let me know. Did the Brooklyn Nets, they overrated, underrated? Is they going to make the playoffs? Is, is we sleeping on them? Can they make that trade? Is Jimmy Butler coming? Is he not? Is it another guy that they should go after? Is they crazy for even thinking they can sign somebody as bad as they've been? And can you get, give them forgiveness? They don't have Billy King anymore. He made that move. They've been in a dark shadow after that. And can they get out of that, move forward, and get a superstar and rebuild around them? And basically, contend in the East. We don't know until we see what happens. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I'm going.